Uh, I have BB for Akeem Williams. What species are you? Welcome inside the RX Muscle Studios in Westbury, New York for another episode of Ask Dave, better known as Hashtag Ask Dave, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit SpeciesNutrition.com. I'm your host, Sadiq Faruqi. We're trying something a little different this week. Now, this was brought on, I want to give him credit, uh, I believe it was Team 3CC Carlos on Instagram brought up a great idea. Why don't we have species giveaways during the show? So we figure, yeah, it's a great idea. So this is how it's going to work. The best I hate this show line. Now, for those not familiar, Dave, for the longest time from Heavy Muscle Radio, you should tell callers, instead of saying, hey, I love this show, tell us you hate this show and get creative about it. And so far, you've done a great job with that. So the best I hate this show is going to get nitrolized. We're going to send it to you. We're going to collect your contact information. We're going to mail it to you. The best overall question of the show is going to get this species gym bag as well as nitrolyze pre-workout by species nutrition as we now bring in Dave Palumbo. Dave, we're giving away species products. It was a great idea by one of our viewers and we heeded his advice. Well, you know, we always want to give back to the viewership. You know, you guys are supporting us with some great questions for the show, giving us good content. And I feel that, you know, as a person who always was a fan of bodybuilding growing up, Anything that I could do that was, was was creative and that I could actually get something for free for, I was in on. So I'm going to give you guys some great products. Every week we'll give away something different. And, uh, you know, if you want to get in on the action, send in those creative questions. Dave, I know we're going to get a question on this. So we might as well ask right away, what's with the dapper look this afternoon? Well, well I usually wear my sport jacket, as you know. But my sport jacket <laughs> is being re reconfigured for me, uh, as they say. My stylist, Janine Giordenti. A shameless plug uh, is uh, recutting some of my suits to, to to reconfigure to my new trimmer leaner physique. So you know the name of the game again. If you have a question for Dave, this is the place to ask your question. Anything for training, diet, supplementation, questions about IFBB pros, competitors, life, music, anything, it is all on the table. You can ask questions via the Muscle Central Forum on rxmuscle.com. If you're not already a member, it is free to register. On our Instagram page, official underscore rxmuscle, you can tweet questions using hashtag AskDave or on our official Facebook page. But we start this afternoon in the Muscle Central Forum and our good friend, I Fabian. Hi, Dave. Every week, your listeners tell you how, I'll say crap, this show is, and it surprises me. Still, you have not shut it down yet. Next year, when I see you at FIBO, I'm going to personally kidnap you and make sure you take this crappy-ass show offline. Anyway, will acne and gyno always occur to some degree when on a test-only 500 milligram cycle, or is it even possible to not run into these issues at all? You know, I know people that never break out. I've seen guys take tremendous amounts, two, 3,000 grams, uh, milligrams of stuff a week, and they don't break out. You know, uh, I took one testosterone shot, my first shot, and, and I got acne from it, you know, because I was always prone to breaking out. So it, it has a lot to do with genetics. If you're more predisposed to breaking out, you'll break out worse on stuff. If you don't really get acne and you never got it as a kid, and there are people like that out there, then you probably won't break out from the stuff. And they, you know, it, it, it's, it's like I said, it's very variable, person specific. Well, stick with the Muscle Central Forum on rxmuscle.com and go to NBA R. Yosef. Hate to love this show with Dave. Can you use fentermine on keto and while trying to lose weight and will it eat my muscles? Fentermine is, is, a, is an amphetamine-like derivative that, that basically kills your appetite. Um, you know, I don't like appetite suppressants. Number one, there's so many studies that are coming out now that show that they can cause heart disease later in life, and they're just not good for you. They stress the body out. They raise cortisol levels. We know high cortisol levels suppress the immune system. They can cause abdominal body fat deposition. Um, you know, they're just not, it's not something you want in your body. Um, if you're going to lose weight, there's a certain amount of discipline necessary. Um, I think fentramine is trying to take the easy way out, and there was always ramifications when you take the easy way out. I have not seen good results from it. We'll stay with the Muscle Central Forum again on rxmuscle.com and go to 
BB50 Plus. Dave, and I guess you too, Sid, can't believe that I wade through this morass of crap just to get this question answered. So, Dave, <laughs> this is a good question here. Why do whey protein powders typically come in vanilla and chocolate flavors, but pre-workouts and other amino acid powders come in fruity or berry flavors? Well, you know, amino acids uh, by nature are very bitter. You know, I had a company contact me and say, we have the best flavoring system. We're going to make you this amazing amino acid drink. I'm like, all right, send it over. And uh, they sent me samples, and it was so disgusting. It, it literally tasted like battery acid. Um, and... What I found and what a lot of the flavoring guys have found, and my, my, I have an amazing flavor guy. We're coming out, obviously, with Amino Lies, which will be our, our fermented uh, branch-chain amino acid product will be coming out. And it tastes outrageous. When you mix them with, like, berry and, and, and flavors that have a tart usually taste to them, they kind of can, can hide that, that bitter taste of the amino acid. If you were to put vanilla or chocolate in there, it wouldn't mask it at all, and it would taste terrible. Now, whey protein, unflavored, tastes like chalk. It has no taste. Mm -hmm. So you can make pretty much any flavor of protein and make it work. Now, some companies use hydro that use hydrosylates, whey hydrosylates, they have to use berry flavors because hydrosylates taste like gasoline, too. They got that real bitter taste. That's why you really don't want to put a lot of hydrosylate in your product. You're better off using almost a 99% whey protein isolate, and then you can sprinkle some hydrosylates, kind of like we do with isolize in there. But once you start putting higher and higher percentages of hydrosylate, you kill the taste, and you can't really go with the good flavoring systems. You're watching Ask Dave on RxMuscle.com, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Again, we are giving away species prizes this afternoon. For the best overall question, you're going to get a species gym bag and nitrilize pre-workout. For the best I hate this show line, you're going to get nitrilize pre-workout. We're now going to go to our Instagram page, and we've gotten a lot of good questions from this page over the last three, four episodes. So let's see if we can keep that going. Again, it is official underscore RX muscle. First question from Kenshi Roji. Hey, Dave, I hate your show so much. I'd rather watch the Kai Green grapefruit video during the middle of the night in North Korea 1,000 times. That's pretty good. That's a candidate right there for best I hate. My question is, why do professional athletes change gurus so quickly? Well, you know, it's funny because the amateurs tend to stick with the same person. I have clients that I've been working with in the amateur level for years, and they're pretty and they're very loyal and they're very you know grateful. What pros tend to do, and I'm not saying all pros do this, is a lot of times they don't do. You know, you can get a pro into the best shape of their life, and they still don't do well at a show because a pro show is a very high caliber of competition. Just because you're in your best shape doesn't mean you're going to win or you're going to place top five. And I think a lot of you know pros want to blame someone for the reason why they didn't do well, and a lot of times they blame the guru, or they got guys whispering in their ear and saying, you got to go to another guy because so-and-so doesn't know what he's talking about and he's not doing well, he's ruining your physique. So I, I think the pros like to play the blame game. I've seen it happen to me. I've seen other you know, guys that train people you know, that get blamed for maybe something that's not their fault. I know guys that cheat and then they want to blame the guy who helps them with their diet and they're not even following the diet uh, accurately. So the pros tend to have a little bit more at stake and they, and they tend to believe, well, we're the best and we should win every show, and if they don't, then it's got to be someone's fault. It's kind of like, you know, when a football team doesn't do well, they usually fire the coach. It's, they don't usually get rid of the players. Let's go over now to Andrews Lamb's back. Dave, I hate this show so much, I would rather watch Mayweather versus Pacquiao. That is a good one right there. <laughs> it wouldn't have been a good one two weeks ago, but in light of the fight, great one. Anyway... Is the macro ratio 50p, 30c, 20f a useful one, or is that too much protein? Would 40, 40, 20 be preferred? And and what what it's it's protein, fat, carbs? Is that how he's yeah, laying it uh, out? Pro, uh, 50, pro, 50 protein, mm -hmm. 30 carbs, 20 fat. I always like to keep fat higher, to be honest with you. So um, I would probably knock down the protein to about 50. <laughs> I'd have the, the fat up at about 30. And probably, you know, well, it, dep it depends. If you're trying to lose weight, you know, carbs will be lower. If you're trying to gain weight, the carbs will be a little higher. Um, it could vary around. I Once again, I, I usually go, obviously, protein is always the highest. Usually, fat is half your protein, and then carbs kind of fit in between. So I usually figure, like, you know, for, like, a 200 to 250-pound person, it's usually, like, 50 grams of protein per meal, about 25, 30 grams of fat per meal, and then you're going to go about 30 25, 30 to 50 grams of carbs per meal, depending on, you know, what your metabolism is. 
Let's go over now to Chad Jackson Fit. Dave, do you see the IFBB listening to Arnold and seeing changes the way pro bodybuilders are being judged? Less, less guts, more aesthetics. You know, I, I don't. I, I think the judging is pretty good. I got to be honest with you on the pro bodybuilding level. You know, you see a couple of bad decisions once in a while, but. By and far, it's pretty damn accurate. I mean, look at New York Pro this week. They really, Jim Mannion's, you know, without a doubt, the best judge out there. And he pretty much always gets it right. You know, once in a while, like I said, you're going to see a weird, controversial decision. You know, the Arnold Classic was difficult to judge this year because no one was really at their best best. So you, once you start judging guys that are a little bit off, it, it becomes subjective, you know. So could you have seen, could I have seen Cedric winning? Yeah, but I, but I'm not terribly upset with him at fourth place um you can make a case for all these guys you know winning in that top four and uh you know arnold's call to arms really you know i think the judges have a good handle on what's going on you know once again just because a guy has a small waist doesn't mean he deserves to win the show it's the whole total package let's go back to the muscle central forum on rxmuscle.com again if you're not already a member it is free to register you'll have access to all our contest galleries and that's something you're going to want during the fact that now we're in the contest uh, schedule. Let's go to Todd Lincoln. Dave, you're known as a guy who wasn't afraid to turn on the gas during your competitive days. You since transitioned to a healthy lifestyle in life after the stage and appear to be of sound and prosperous health. What factors do you believe are the primary catalyst to the surge of premature deaths among current and former competitive bodybuilders the last few years? Um, I think a lot of guys, you know, put their head in the sand, so to speak. They don't want to really address what's wrong with them. You know, uh, I can't tell you how many guys I've asked, you know, when was the last time you went for blood work or an echocardiogram or, you know, do you know what your blood pressure is? And no one knows. You know, people just think, well, you know, I train every day, five days a week. I do a little cardio, maybe three or four of those days, and I eat pretty healthy, then I'm in good shape. The problem is that there's a lot of, like, unknown, you know, dangers lurking beneath your skin, so to speak, meaning if you have a genetic predisposition to have clogged coronary arteries, just because you eat healthy doesn't mean you don't have coronary artery disease. That's why you got to get that checked out. Um, if you're a bodybuilder, your heart can be a little enlarged. Sometimes when you get an enlarged heart, you're, you can get an arrhythmia here and there. You might need some medication for that. So there's things that, that, that are unknown variables, I think, that, that can lead to a lot of sudden deaths. And, you know, I've even read an article, there was an article that just came out recently that showed that low testosterone has a much higher incidence of sudden death heart attacks. And, you know, so a lot of guys, when they're, some guys, when they, when they get done bodybuilding, they go off all this gear and then they don't take anything and the testosterone's low and that could be a problem. And then a lot of guys just, you know, when they get, they get lost, they get psychologically and emotionally lost when they stop competing. And some people go to recreational drugs, and that you know you combine bodybuilding with recreational drugs, and that's a that's a deadly duo. So I think that you know there's a certain amount of people that die young anyway, and you know you throw some some risk factors, and you throw the fact that no one's really paying attention to what's going on, and it's it's a recipe for disaster. So uh, once again, if this is a, if this is a message or a warning for people who are listening, if you're in that age range, 35 and up, and you know you really haven't gone for a physical lately, you haven't gone for blood tests, you maybe haven't gone to a cardiologist and got a, you know, got an echocardiogram done or an EKG or even, you know, a coronary CAT scan where you can see the vessels, um, you might want to get that checked out. You know, it, it could be the difference between, you know, living a long life and not. You're watching Ask Dave on rxmuscle.com, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Go to speciesnutrition.com. Again, we are giving away Species products. The best I hate the show line is going to get nitrilized pre-workout, mango or berry blast, your choice. And for the best question of the show, we're giving away a species gym bag as well as Nitrolyze. We now go over to the live stream live chat box and check in with our viewers watching us on Livestream.com. And we check in with Ayad Naji. Hello, Dave. My question is, if my body needs of protein is 300 grams, should I eat 150 grams of protein and take 150 from the supplements or what? Well, you know... You could do it from all from food. You could do it all from shakes. I always like the mixture of both. I like to do meal, shake, meal, shake, meal, shake. Because when you take a good shake and a good quality shake, especially shake like isolized, 
that's a you know pure whey isolate, you kind of get an infusion of protein. It gets absorbed very rapidly into the bloodstream. So you get like a, a fuel injection, if you may, of, of, of amino acids into your bloodstream, which are going to feed, obviously, the muscles. When you eat food, because of the digestion process and the time it takes to process the food, you're going to get a slow trickle of, of protein into the bloodstream. So by alternating meal and shake, meal and shake, you're going to get this trickle and then a, a little spike of protein and a trickle and a spike of protein. And that seems to, in my experience, generate the best muscle gains. Dave, let's take a couple of questions from competitors. The first one, a figure girl, Mary Beth, is two weeks out from a show. She's on your diet. Should she should uh, she stay on it till the carbo process before the show? Well, I mean, if it's working, then stay on it. You know, I always do, you know, I have the, the especially the women on very low carbs, um, usually no carbs, you know, high protein, moderate fat. Sometimes I mix that in with a couple days of, of just protein and vegetables. Some women need to go super low. Remember, fats get stored, even the essential fatty acids. So it's okay to miss a day or two of fats or even three in there because your body does store these fats. Um, once the the level of, uh, of leanness has been achieved, okay, then you can think about, well, how am I going to carb the person up? Some women, I, I worked with a girl this past week, and I didn't carb her up at all, and she looked great on stage because she just gets really smooth when I give her carbs. Most of the women I will carb up for one day, usually the day before the show and then the day of the show, but I usually do it pretty lightly. Most women don't need a tremendous amount of carbs unless they happen to just be a genetic freak, and there's not a lot of genetically gifted women who burn carbs super well out there. They're out there, but there's, but the majority of them do better on less, Is okay? Now, I do have a cheat meal in usually once a week that has a, some sort of a carbohydrate load in it. Um, that can be eliminated when we get down to the last couple of weeks if, if, if the body's level of, of uh, leanness is not really what we desire. So I, in other words, I might torture the person a little bit more at the end. So once again, it's a very individualized process. That's where you know my coaching comes in. The diet works, but it needs to be tweaked, certainly. Let's stick with the competitors and go to Layla TRP. Dave, I'm seven weeks from my show following your diet, bikini competitor. As weeks go by, I feel leaner, but my weight stays the same. I can tell my body is changing. Should I be afraid? I've heard you say competitors should lose two pounds a week. Should I up my cardio? Um, you know, when, when a person, especially, you know, bikini competitor, you know, and this goes to show you, you know, pretty much – all diets work the same way. I mean, people ask me, well, I'm a bikini competitor or I'm a bodybuilder. Hmm. Well, science is science, you know. And, you know, for those of you interested who want to learn more about science, you know, not to diverge from the question for a second, but, you know, I'm teaching the guru how to become a diet guru, which is really how to become educated in the science of supplements, nutrition, diet, you know, and, and performance-enhancing drugs. I'm teaching that uh, March 23rd here in New York. You can sign up at DavePalumbo.com or I have a course also being held in Sydney, Australia on June 13th. But, you know, getting back to um, um, the question, um, as a bikini competitor, as weight loss, you know, wanes and you kind of plateau a little bit, that's when you have to play around with variables that you got at your disposal. Cardio is one, one variable you can increase. Uh, I use some of my stimulant-free fat burners from species, uh, the lipolyzed and sunwise. I might play with the levels of those. Um, I might play with the diet a little bit. You know, like I said earlier in the question just before this, sometimes I'll go to from protein fat, which is you know the, the protocol the stereotype my diet to a protein vegetable diet. So I might lower the fats in the diet for a couple days just to get this, the weight loss going. Once again, those variables, playing with those variables is, is really where a good coach's eye comes in. But the first thing I usually do is up cardio. That's the first change I make. Try that, see how that works. You're watching Ask Dave on rxmuscle.com. We're now going to go to our Twitter feed. If you want to tweet any questions, use the hashtag AskDave. And we, Dave, we I have another candidate for best I hate from Matthew Jacoby, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name. It's either Alb or Albe, uh, at Molly Opo. Dave, I'd rather run through a landmine field wearing snowshoes, dribbling a basketball, than take your crappy advice on this crappy show. <laughs> That's a good one. Dave, do you think cholesterol, statin medications lower testosterone levels in men? Um, what statins do is they bind up cholesterol and they pull it out of the body. Now, if you're a natural bodybuilder, okay, and as we all know, testosterone and all steroidal hormones are made from cholesterol, um, 
it could lower your testosterone level taking a statin. Uh, if you're on a if you're a bodybuilder that is taking hormone replacement or doing cycles of testosterone, probably won't really disrupt you too much. But I'm not a big statin. You know, look, I'm not I'm not here to tell you not to follow your doctor's advice. I don't like statins. I feel that you can control your cholesterol levels with diet way more efficiently than you can do it with, with the drug. Because when you take a drug like a statin, it's basically saying, yeah, eat what you want, just take these drugs and you, and you won't, you know, your cholesterol levels will go down. If you want to change your cholesterol profiles, which means lower the bad LDL cholesterol, raise the good HDL cholesterol carriers, you got you to add essential fats to your diet, like uh, fish oil, evening primrose oil, a great product to do that would be our Omegalyze product from Species Nutrition. You want to add good monounsaturated fats, which are the heart-healthy fats, like extra virgin olive oil, macadamia nut oil, which is another product that we sell at Species Nutrition. Once you incorporate those fats into your, into your diet plan, changing nothing else, obviously you want to get rid of sugars, because sugar consumption raises cholesterol worse than eating fats do, believe it or not. And a new study just showed that. There was a new study that came out that said eating cholesterol in your diet doesn't even affect your cholesterol levels. So here you are taking a statin to lower your cholesterol and get rid of cholesterol. St stop the generation of new cholesterol. Sugar causes the body to, to synthesize cholesterol. Keep your sugar low, your essential fats high, your monounsaturated fats high, and I guarantee your cholesterol will improve. Let's go back to the Livestream.com live chat box and check in with Into Deep 77 It's a question about training. Hey, Dave, I was doing heavy pull-downs for back, and I felt a pop in my abdomen. Now it's sore and hurts at times. What do you think I did, and what can I do to help heal it? P.S. Hate the show. You know, pulling those little obliques or intercostal serratus muscles are so painful. They don't cosmetically look like anything's wrong. They don't necessarily affect your body's ability to work out, other than the fact that they're super painful, especially when you breathe in or you cough out. Um, I remember I had, I had a jet ski and I was driving around and the thing sucked up some seaweed and the motor overheated and, and one of the seals broke and it started taking on water. And I was, this thing was sinking in the middle of the bay. And this, this boat came up next to me and said, you need a hand. And I reached out and I grabbed up onto the rail. And I pulled myself onto the boat and I felt a little pop right in my, my, under my ribs. And I knew I, I tweaked a little bit of a muscle there. That thing hurt me for like eight weeks. Every time I breathed, it was like someone had a knife in my side. That's more than likely what you did. It's Once again, it probably won't inhibit your body's ability to work out in the gym other than the fact that you're going to be in pain from it. So uh, there's nothing I could really even tell you to do. Uh, I would tell you to take anti-inflammatories. I'm not a big you know, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory guy. I think they kind of inhibit muscle growth. So you know, maybe ice it for the first 48 hours and then you know, hopefully you know, just try to stretch it out every day nice and easily and uh, prevent it, uh, scar tissue from building up. And I think that you know, it'll heal up in a couple weeks. Let's get another training question, and this also from the Livestream.com live chat box. This question from Kilo. Dave, do I keep my workout intense, in parentheses, drop sets to failure and force reps while cutting? If not, what kind of workout? Well, you know, when you're cutting, I always tell people, they always ask me, should I up my reps? Should I do this? I? I said, you know, what did you build the muscle? What helped you build the muscle? Basic movements, squats bent rows, deadlifts, bench press, shoulder presses. Don't ever abandon those exercises. Also, there's no reason to drop the weight and do more reps. There's no reason to, you know, do too many supersets or, or too much volume because invariably what's going to happen is you're going to lose all that muscle that you built. Can you throw in a superset here and there or maybe a giant set or, or you know, maybe do a couple forced reps at the end of the workout? Of course. That always increases intensity. But don't go ballistic. Don't turn the 45 or 50-minute workout that you were doing in the offseason that built all this muscle into a two-hour workout that's now burning up the muscle. That's a mistake that a lot of people make. Let's go back to our Instagram page. Again, so our Instagram handle is official underscore RX muscle. Let's hear from Jumpa999. Hello, Dave. Your show sucks as much as it is, or as much as to see an Ingmar Bergman movie. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> I w <laughs> A lot of young guys want to know who that is. <laughs> I wonder what you think about BioGrow from Isatori. Is it a good product for protein synthesis? 
I've never used it, so I, I don't want to even comment. I don't want to say it's bad or good. Um, I always tell people, read the label, take a look and see what the product is, see what's in there. Uh, a lot of times companies will make claims that really are not easily substantiated. Uh, if it sounds like there's really not that much science behind it, then you know maybe you shouldn't be spending your money on it. I think a lot of people spend money on things that they really don't need, but they think they need, and then they don't spend the money on the things that they do need. Uh, number one, I have the question I would ask you is, are you buying a good whey protein isolate? That's real important. Do you have a, a high potency multivitamin, multimineral? Do you take an essential fatty acid supplement? Do you take a fiber supplement? If you've answered no to any of those questions, don't buy that product. Buy one of those. Buy one of those fours that I mentioned because those are the four most important products that you can put into your into your arsenal, especially if you're looking to maximize gains and increase and maximize recovery from your workouts. Well, let's keep it rolling. Got a good one here. I'm going to save this one towards the end. A good candidate for question of the week, but we're going to skip ahead to Mr. C Shadows. Dave, I hate this show so much that I'd rather watch Jenny Jones reruns when you made an appearance. <laughs> okay, I lie. I wouldn't watch it either. <laughs> nice. Dave, what would you recommend for the most intense off-season protocol within your personal reasons, health factors, to put it in the misty, craziest amount of quality size? P.S. Do I get the giveaway for the best Ask Dave disc? You'll have to say to the end of the episode to find out. So he wants the best cycle, like drug cycle? Is that what he's looking for? Yeah. What yeah. would you recommend for the most intense off-season protocol within oh. uh, within your personal You know, before standard? I answer that question, he mentioned Jenny Jones. I was on the Jenny Jones show back in the 90s. I didn't sometime. even know this. Yeah, I was like 315 pounds. <laughs> you know, I look back and I have, I have, I have to I have to put it on, on – get it on video somehow. I have to get Johnny and I got to get it on YouTube because I look so – Distort. First of all, the camera adds what, like thirty pounds to you anyway. So I look like I'm four hundred pounds in this thing, and I'm not fat by any means. But I'm just so my face is so big that I'm horrified by the way I look on the thing. But it, it's pretty funny. I'll, I'll try to dig it up from my dad's archives there and see if we can get it up on YouTube. But um, you know, off season, I, I was, um, I believe it or not, I think that taking less in the off season than than pre contest is actually sometimes better off or better for muscle growth, and I'll tell you why. When you take a lot of drugs, okay, it adds toxicity to your body, and eventually that will, will blunt your appetite. When you can't eat in the off-season, you can't grow. Most people's problem is not that they don't train hard enough, not that they don't take enough drugs, but they can't get enough food down or the right kind of food to grow. So my suggestion is take less off-season, and what, that, what I mean by that is you shouldn't take 16 different compounds. Take two or three drugs, always have a base of testosterone, 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams, obviously. A week is, is, is usually a good one. Uh, something anabolic like equipoise is great, 600 milligrams a week. And, you know, if you want to put one more compound in there, a trembolone or a masterana or something similar, DECA, to, to just augment, that's fine. Usually I go with two compounds with some growth hormone, insulin mm -hmm. if your body's a little, if you're a tough gainer. Uh, with some kind of uh, estrogen blocker, aromatase inhibitor like Arimidex, and you're good to go. You do that, and you eat your eight meals a day, and you train five days a week hard in the gym, and you give your body enough rest, you'll grow. If you don't grow from that, then you're not training hard enough or you're not eating hard enough. That's the bottom line. Let's go back to the uh, Livestream.com live chat box for our visitors on Livestream.com's question from Chris Olson. Dave, I hate this show so much, I would rather take advice from Steve Blackman and listen to him saying, why cut back? My question is, how do you determine what carbohydrates work best for me? Well, you know, the best way to find out what works best for you is trial and error. I'm helping someone right now who, who you know, is convinced that they need to eat 1,000 grams of carbs per day to, to, to load themselves up before a show. But he's smart. He, it's two weeks before the show. He's doing a, a mock tr you know, carb up right now. And, I, and I'm letting him because I want to see how he looks. If he looks overspilled or if he, he looks like he ate too much, then, then you know what? When the show comes around, we'll be able to modify that. So what I'm, the point I'm making is experiment. You know, try low glycemic carbs first. Those always seem to work best at, at giving you a sustained energy source without fat gain. It's carbs like oatmeal, brown rice, sweet potatoes, you know, um, even protein pasta can be considered uh, fit into that, uh, that category. And then if, if, if you tend to not like the way you feel in that, try acting carbs. Try your jasmine or white rice, uh, your white potatoes, 
um, even cream or rice, and see how your body responds in that, and then try a mix of the two and see. So you, it's an experimentation process. And you know what you'll find? As you get bigger, you'll require more carbohydrates. Once again, I always like the slow sustain. When I go home from the gym, I always eat brown rice um, or quinoa or something like that, or even some sweet potatoes. That's just what I like, and I find my body is, you know, I don't get those ups and downs as much. Now, when you're trying to carb up, you want to use fast, quick absorbing carbs because you want to drive the glycogen into the muscles as quickly as possible. So it depends what your goals are, and that would determine what your carbohydrate intake would be. You're watching Ask Dave on rxmuscle.com, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Again, visit speciesnutrition.com. Check out our entire line. And again, we are giving away species uh, freebies, essentially. We're going to be doing this here on out. So for the best I hate this show line, you're going to get our nitrolyzed pre-workout. For the best question of the show, you're not only going to get the gym bag, you're also going to get nitrolyzed. We go back to our Instagram page. Good friend of the show, Farabi K. Hi, Dave. I don't know if you and Sid noticed that I didn't ask my questions in the last two episodes. I'm not sure where you're going with that. Da, 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 da. But okay, let's go to your question. What uh, does GH really do? Because a lot of people say they use it to burn fat. Well, growth hormone actually has two, uh, I guess you could say, uses in the body. It has two roles. Number one, growth hormone is a, is a fat mobilizing hormone. It directly mobilizes fat. It tells the fat cells, use fat for fuel, create ATP from it. Um, so in that sense, it works opposite of insulin. Insulin is a fat storage hormone. Growth, horm growth hormone is a fat mobilizing hormone. It has a second effect that we call an indirect effect. When, it's broken down, when growth hormone gets broken down in the liver, the liver releases another hormone in response to this growth hormone called IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor. IGF-1 binds to IGF-1 receptors on the muscle cells, specifically damaged muscle cells, and initiates a, a muscle repair uh, process. Um, it also will activate what we call satellite cells. Satellite cells are undifferentiated muscle cells. In other words, they're, they're muscle cells that don't, they, they don't do it. They look like shit underneath a microscope, basically. Blobs of nothingness, or protoplasm as we call it. And the IGF-1 will, will, will make these cells turn into muscle cells. So it'll create new muscle tissue that wasn't there. Uh, obviously, then it's up to you to enlarge those cells, you know, through working out, eating right, and whatever other, you know, drugs you're taking. But IGF-1, by and far, is the growth component of, of growth hormone. So growth hormone st indirectly stimulates that and then directly has a fat-burning effect. Those are your two uh, effects of GH. Let's go to Jesus underscore Treto. Hi, Dave. I hate your show so much more than Steve Blackman employees that don't get paid. Why cut back? <laughs> My <cool>. question is... <laughs> that, might be the, that might be the one of the week. <laughs> that might be the winner. Uh, My question is, will you ever bring your guru seminar to L.A.? I wanted to attend it so bad, but it's on the other side of the country. My other question is, what's a good way to determine whether or not you're getting trash steroids online? You know what? We'll address the steroid one first because... It's, a lot of people ask me this. I have clients that send me pictures of stuff. They're like, is this good? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not a, a testing lab. I'm not an HPLC <laughs> you know, machine. I don't know. It, that's, it, it's, it's terrible. We're, we live in a society where everything is kind of self-made now, and it's really impossible to tell what the quality of it is. I don't even think the people making it know the quality because unless you're testing the raw materials you're getting from China, it's impossible to know. So, you know, you really have to go on anecdotal evidence, which means asking the guy next door, how did you like the stuff, you know? So it, it is a weird, you know, type of thing. If you have access to getting real pharmaceutical brand stuff from a doctor, that's the way to go um, because at least you know you're getting what you pay for, you know? Uh, that's really where that amounts to. Now, the other question was, what, you, what was it again? Uh, about bringing uh, oh, the, the Guru seminar. seminar to Los Angeles. You know, I, look, I, I told some of the guys in England want me to go there and do the seminar. I said, you know what? Organize it. Set up a, I'll come, for 20 people, I'll come and do the seminar. It's a very long day for me, and it's a lot of, it's a pain in the ass, but I, if I have 20 interested people that are going to show passion for wanting to learn, I will come there. Plus, the, you know, I'm, I don't mind putting a few bucks in my pocket either, but for my time and effort, but the bottom line is I'm a teacher, and I want to be able to teach people. If, if I'm going to go travel halfway across the country, I want to know that I have 20 people there who are going to be engaged and who are going to want to learn. Um, and if any people want to contact me directly to help set up a seminar there, um, we can certainly do that.
We're going to take a couple of more questions because we do want to, I guess, uh, award the winners of the best I hate line and the best question of the week. So let's go to uh, Pete Morgan. Dave, your show reminds me of a spent match skating at the bottom of a construction site's porta potty urinal. <laughs> Keep up the worthless <laughs> advice. <laughs> As a candidate. Yeah. <laughs> Question. Once and for all, is using synthol for fascia stretching a true muscle building technique or nothing more than quote unquote bro science? If not bro science, what supporting evidence is there and why or why not use it year round on stubborn body parts like calves, triceps, biceps, etc.? You know, the real synthol out there, and there's really only two brands that are real, it's Chris Clark's Synthesize original brand. And the uh, painless pumps version, both of which you know I have available on DavePalumbo.com. Um, th- those brands is actually science in there. And when I say there's science in there, there, there are there are uh, neutral oils in there, which you know most people would call MCTs, but they're, they're not necessarily MCTs. But they're neutral oils, meaning that they don't cause the immune system to react to them. You don't want it like if you put mineral oil into your into your bicep, your immune system is going to attack it. You're going to get tons of scar tissue and inflammation there. You don't want to use an oil that's immunoreactive. But there's also enzymes in there and protein carriers. And um, the reason that's in there is once the stuff is in the muscle, the muscle releases um, what's called lipoprotein lipase, which is an enzyme that breaks down these, these fats. And then the muscle sucks up these fats and uses them for fuel. This, in essence, is what Scott Connolly would call a positive uh, partitioning nutrient, meaning that it's causing the cell to hype up its metabolism, and it creates a super anabolic environment in that area. That's why guys that inject synthol, they might get that volumizing effect initially from putting the oil in there, but long term, the longer you use it, you actually start to build new muscle tissue in there. So it has two effects. It has an initial quick volumizing effect, but then it has a long term um, muscle building effect, and they've shown this in, in Amsterdam. They were doing some, they did some studies on this, where they actually showed new muscle tissue on the MRI studies growing into the area. Now, the difference between the, the Chris Clark, I think the Chris Clark has a slightly stronger driving effect for for muscle building. But what happens is because of that, the, the cells are releasing so much ingredients to try to break down the oils in there that they get dehydrated. And when a muscle cell gets dehydrated, what happens is that prostaglandins are released. And prostaglandins are what release are, are what's released when you get the flu. That's why you get achy. Well, that's what causes that achiness in the muscle. The painless pumps has a, a different technology that it, probably electrolyte driven, so that when the when the cell releases these enzymes, the electrolytes go into the cell, pulling fluid with it, balancing the the fluid balance in the cell, thus not causing this prostaglandin release. And that's why the painless pumps don't hurt. So depending on what your goals are. Either one of those products works very well. Now, the other oils out there that, that people are selling as site injection oils don't have any of that. They're just neutral. They're just oils. And so you're basically shooting motor oil into your arm. Not you know, sterile, obviously, oil in that sense. So you're only getting the volumizing effect. You're not getting the muscle building effect uh, uh, there. So that's the science more or less in simplistic terms it is more com- complicated than that and we don't really i'm not going to go into the biochemistry of it but that's the bare bones nuts and bolts of it i, I did want to take one from our facebook page uh it is someone that does ask a lot of good questions so i wanted to get him involved as well wayne crandell this show is so bad that i would rather run through a cornfield naked nice what is the best approach? That's it. Where was, I thought there was yeah, a punchline. I, I, I was waiting for like that hook, and then you, bam. Um, where are you going? I would here? have said. I would have said uh, it's just as bad. I'm running through a cornfield naked, and then I hit a pitchfork or something like that in my groin or something like that. I don't know. What, what is the best approach while on a bulking phase to keep fat stores down? Also, I'm looking forward to the new smart training book. Will it be out before December? Because I have to get recertified through you in December. I don't know how my clients find it. I don't even think I mentioned it to anyone that I was redoing the smart book. I have redone my smart personal training certification course. Um, I haven't updated the book since 2011, I believe. I re-upped it with all the newest supplements and all the newest you know, breaking you know, nutritional knowledge that I have. It's the most comprehensive you know, 
personal training certification course I think that you could possibly have out there. It deals with nutrition. It deals with supplementation. It talks about, you know, proteins, fats, and carbs. It talks about training, setting up training programs, you know, how to structure your, your, week, your, excuse me, your yearly cyclical training from power phase to uh, cutting phase to strength phase to off phase. And it basically lays out all the principles of personal training that are relevant to a personal trainer. In other words, I'm not going to teach you stuff that you don't need to know. So many, I've certified thousands of people with that course. And once again, you can go to DavePalumba.com and get that. Um, mm -hmm. And people just love it. They write me emails after and say, Dave, that it was such a good book that I read. So anyway, we got the new book coming out. You could buy the book separately if you want, or you can buy the course. They're both available. If you buy the course online, you get the free download of the book. If you want to have a physical copy of the book, I should have that in a couple, in two weeks or so. And you can, once again, purchase that on DavePalumba.com. Getting back to your question um, about, you know, how many grams of carbohydrates, you know, I think that was the question, right? Um, let me pull it up again. Off-season so you don't get fat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, once That's again, right. that's variable. You know, when I was off-season, I had to eat 1,200, you know, 1,200 uh, grams of carbs a day. You know, some guys, if they eat 100, they get fat. So it's a variable type of process. Once again, trial and error. you got to figure out what you need. I, I always tell people start a little low, and then you can always increase it. Okay? Uh, in other words, you're not gaining weight or you're losing weight, up the carbs. You know, if that doesn't help, then you might want to up your protein to fat. So you, once again, you got to play with the variables till you get the right formula. And the, the, the tricky thing is don't go back to what you did last year because if you added 5, 10 pounds of muscle from last year, you probably need more protein and you might even need some more carbs. Let's go to the last question. Again, we are going to have our winners for best question and best I hate line. But the last question, which I think is a good one. From Hoodman521, Dave, your show is worse than Steve Blackman's business model. <laughs> Simple to the point. With so many gym and health clubs on the market, what kind of gym would you personally open and why? That's a good question because a lot of people say, what gym would you work at? And, you know, obviously, Steve Weinberger, I have an open, you know, invitation to train there anytime I want. And you know what? When I have time, I go over there. I'm actually lazy because, you know, I get out of work sometimes 11 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night. I go to the gym around the corner. But if I had to open my own gym, um, number one, it would be very well air conditioned and ventilated. <laughs> I, think I have more people complaining about that than anything in the, you know, than any other, you know, thing about gyms. But you got you to gotta do what Steve Weinberger did and what some of these other gym owners did. You got to collect equipment. You got to be a connoisseur of equipment because you could anyone can go to you know to to one company and say you know I want all your equipment the whole line because it's easy you buy it from one company, but a truly good gym gets the best equipment from every company. You know my good friend Ron Norman has an amazing home gym and that's what he does. He's like he like picks the stuff out like he's cherry picking it and he is always changing up the equipment. You got to pick the best equipment for each body part. And the only way to really know that is to have been a guy who worked out yourself. So, you know, you know, I know what equipment is good. I know exactly what lines I would go. And I would do a little research because there's probably stuff I don't know about out there. And I think that's what makes a truly good gym, the combination of different lines of equipment that will help people to achieve the best, I guess, you know, gains that they could possibly get. Plus, you know, nowadays, you know, cardio is super important. So everyone wants a, a good cardio line of equipment. So you really got to do your research. And I think that that's important. And plus, you want to make it an environment that's conducive to training. Uh, I think that the, 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 how you decorate the place is super important. David Barton has that down pat. David Barton spent a million dollars on lighting his David Barton's gym in Seattle, Washington. If you want to see an amazing gym, go there. That, that's what I would use as my prototype. I think that gym is outrageous. I, I love that gym. All right, now it is a time where we vote. It's going to be myself, it's going to be Dave and our producer, Johnny Styles. We're going to start with the best I hate line and the winner that's going to win, Species Nitrolyze pre-workout. So the first one, which I think got universal nod of approval from Matthew Jacoby Alb, I'd rather run through a landmine field wearing snowshoes, dribbling a basketball than taking your crappy advice on this <laughs> crappy show. So then we're going to file that one away. That might good. be our winner. Andrews, I am back. Or rather, yeah, I, Andrews, I am back. I hate this show so much, I would rather watch Mayweather Pacquiao. All right, that's good. Um, Jesus Trejo. Hi, Dave. I hate your show so much more than Steve Blackman employees that don't get paid while I cut back. All right. Kenshi Roji. 
Hey Dave, I hate your show so much. I'd rather watch the Kai Green grapefruit video during the middle of the night in North Korea a thousand times. That could be a finalist as well. So we'll file that one as well. Uh, Pete Morgan, Dave, your show reminds me of a spent match skating at the bottom of a construction site porta potty <laughs> urinal. Keep up the worthless <laughs> advice. And I'm that's, getting a lot of laughter. My, that's my favorite. All right. I got to tell you, that's Pete my Morgan favorite. Morgan might be our winner. <laughs> Uh, where else? I might have picked the Kai Green one, one, but I'm not sending anything to Korea. So, all right, uh, all right. So you know what? I think uh, if let's go with our finalist, the uh, Pete Morgan, the one about the, the bottom match. of the urinal. Yeah, I think that's that's my favorite. All right, so Pete dot Morgan on Instagram. Congratulations, <laughs> you win species nitrilized pre workout. We will be in touch with you to get your cont- uh, contact information. <laughs> I have two finalists for best question. The first one, which was the last one from Hoodman521, uh, Dave, with so many gym and health clubs in the market, which kind of gym would you personally open and why? thought that was a good one. Mm. And uh, then the other finalist from BB50+, Plus, which had also a very good Best I hate as well. I can't believe that I wade through this morass of crap just to get this question answered. Uh, the question was about uh, why whey protein powders typically come in vanilla and chocolate flavors, but pre-workouts and other amino acid powders generally come in fruity or berry flavors. My vote will go for Hoodman521, the question about would Jim you would personally open and why, Dave? What say you? Um, I I like the other one. Okay, the pa- the protein powder. I like the protein powder okay. first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, well, let's go to our uh, producer Johnny Styles. Johnny, uh, what say you? Break the tie, Johnny. So we're gonna go with the the gym question. Okay. All right. So Hood, Hoodman five twenty one on Instagram. Congratulations, you win this species gym bag as well. As a nitrilized pre workout. Again, we will get your contact information. We will be in touch with you. We will get these products out to both our winners by tomorrow. This is a lot of fun, and this is what we're going to be doing going forward. Again, we thank you so much for watching another episode of Ask Dave. Reminder we'll be back next week, Wednesday, and then next Thursday. We'll be back with an all-new episode of Heavy Muscle TV. Special thanks once again to our producer, Johnny Styles. We will talk to you next week. Have a good day.